it's the next level. Where are you? Oh, relax. I'm taking the elevator. I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, I, uh... I'm sorry. I wasn't talking to you. Can I tell you a secret? Please don't do this. Mm. I was talking to an Avenger. He's in my ear. Maybe you should stop talking. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I'm his partner. I'll just uh, take this back. I, I can help you to the door, no problem. Oh, that's all right. Hey, panel owners, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the fourth episode of Marvel's Hawkeye. And as you all know, we're covering Hawkeye episode four, Partners, Am I Right? (laughs) (laughs) Such a funny title. (laughs) And what's the synopsis, Steve? The synopsis for this one is, Secrets are revealed and hard truths emerge, culminating in a battle against two opposing forces. Hmm, Pretty brief. Yeah. Pretty interesting, too, because, yeah, they are two opposing forces, which would be Hawkeye and Kate Mm -hmm. against uh, Maya and her people. Right. Literally. Right. (laughs) Yep. And our special guest that that appeared at the end. Yes. Yeah. And we'll we'll move on to that. But initial thoughts. What were your initial thoughts? I, it was it was good. You know, the first time I watched it, the beginning is kind of slow, and I had kind of the same feeling on the second watch that the beginning is kind of slow. But I really loved that whole family dynamic that we got there uh, at the beginning with Kate, Ma, her mom, Jack, and and Clint there mm. in the house, and that awkward uh, you know conversation. We'll t- and I'll talk more about that in my in my notes, but. Uh, <laughs> um, and of course, the ending was just amazing. I'm sure we're going to talk about yep. about that. Um, we've been waiting. This is the cast member that I particularly have been waiting to see because it was announced that she was going to be here, yeah. and I, I couldn't wait. And I was just like, "When is she going to show up?" And uh, so finally, <laughs> we we got her here in episode four, which is funny too because they online it was stating that we would get her. Not to give away too much, but obviously you all watched the episode. But we they mentioned that Florence Pugh was going to be in four episodes total. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, it's a six episode show, and we're in the fourth episode. So, and she shows up at the very end. So it's literally two and a quarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And I think you know, I wonder if there was originally a scene in the third episode, maybe that they were going to show her, but it ended up getting cut for some reason. Yeah, because I think even in IMDb, I think IMDb originally showed her first episode as being three, which is so, weird. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, like you. I have to say, I, I love that whole family aspect, especially with the like that dining room table conversation between Clint, Kate, Eleanor, and Jack. And you could tell Eleanor is uh, very concerned about it. Her daughter doesn't want to lose her in any way. She's concerned for her well-being, doesn't want Kate mixed up with Clint and anything that has to go on with this quote unquote mission mm-hmm. that he's on. Uh, and, and it shows that, you know, that Eleanor really is concerned for Kate, which I really do admire. And I, I just love Jack and how, how silly he could be <laughs> the mm-hmm. character itself. At first I thought, okay, this has got to be somebody that we should be concerned about, but I don't think so overall in the end. Uh, you know, I also like the fact that, you know, Eleanor brings it up to, to Clint about being a dad and knowing and understanding and then Clint stating all that good stuff. Uh, especially love the fact that they have the uh, good, great representation from the NYPD and NYFD and being involved. And we get the LARPers back and, yeah. and we have that representation and it, it it was good to see them involved and showed so much respect for them within the episode and showing that they are the true heroes that are out there that I, uh, that we have. And I, I think that was, uh, a calling card from Marvel to those people that do protect us. So that, that was my feeling overall. Great episode. Interesting. Had a lot of laughter in it. A lot of interesting takes and a lot of action at the very end, which I'm very happy about. Yeah. (laughs) 
So with that, we should move right along into our top fives. Sure. A superhero house call and a serenade all in one day. And you know what they say. Life is short. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> what? What did I say? Did I say something wrong? What? Every time you use one of those aphorisms, they're wrong. What? No. <laughs> that can't be right, is it? Uh, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, it's just going back to that opening scene there in, in the Bishop home. And I couldn't tell if it's the same apartment from episode one or if it's a different apartment, but it's definitely another, you know, another high rise. It's a very it's an expensive place. Yes. Obviously, I mean, it has its own private elevator or at least an elevator that comes right to their to their room. I don't know if it's necessarily private. Maybe there's other, you know, there might be other apartments that use the same elevator. You just unlock your door. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but uh, in that whole awkward conversation, you kind of mentioned a little bit there at the desk or the dining room, the dining room table where, where they're asking uh, Kate or Kate, uh, where Eleanor is asking Kate questions mm -hmm. and Clint is like, no, we're not friends. No, we're not partners. And, and you can just see how Kate is just gushing uh, about this, even though she claims to be chill about it. Um, but yeah, uh, it was it was interesting to me. I thought that Jack did not recognize Clint until <laughs> Eleanor said, "Why is there an Avenger in my living room?" Yeah, you know, and exactly. As soon as she, as soon as she says that, uh, Jack is like, "Oh, you're the Archer," you know. And, I was <laughs> like, uh, and you know, again, going back to that whole branding thing from from Kate, and uh, then you know, we get that after he leaves, and it, it it took my second viewing to realize that I guess he did get the sword back. Um, he does does take it. We see him in the elevator with it. Yep. Um, but that whole conversation that he has with with Eleanor, where she very pointedly is telling him that she understands the risks in this kind of mission, this kind of life, and she doesn't want Kate in it. But he basically says, "Well, I'll keep her safe." And then we have that phone call where she calls somebody. And says that she needs to talk to them urgently. And I'm I'm starting to lean. I think it was TV Podcast Industries. I heard them uh, voice the, the possibility that Kate's dad may be this uh, big crime uh, boss. You know, uh, boss that, that we've been hmm. uh, alluding to. Because we never actually saw him die. We heard he we, – we saw the funeral. Yeah. And the mom never actually said he was dead. When Kate asked, it, it kind of cut to black and, get, and brought us to the Hawkeye logo. Hmm. So you know, I interesting. So it's a it's a possibility that that that, her, that Kate's father could be alive and he could be the the guy who's behind all this. Interesting. All right, that that's interesting events. But I, I've heard the same thing over and over again from people talking online or through YouTube and things of that nature. But I, I try not to let that sway me. But it, it could be too obvious for the fact that, like you stated, you know, we have not seen him. You know, we didn't see him die. Mm -hmm. So he basically disappeared and it's just been Kate and Eleanor all this time. But did they ever mention, that's the one thing I never went back to, is did they ever mention that her father died? No, they have a funeral. No, they show them at the funeral, at okay. the father's funeral, yeah. or the burial. I'm sorry, the burial. Yes, they that show is the correct. burial yeah. of of the father. So I'm, he's 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 declared dead. I'm not saying that he is dead. I'm just oh, saying he could have faked his that, own death at right. this point and then became this huge crime yeah. boss. Yeah, you know, they were saying they had they were having money trouble, and you know what? What about life insurance? They probably had insurance on that. Uh, apartment. Yes. So, you know, who knows? And, you know, he was a rich guy. He could have had, you know, a million or $2 million life insurance policy that they could have cashed in on. And who exactly. Knows? So, yeah. Well, like you, uh, my number five would be, you know, Clint getting the Ronin sword back from Eleanor's home and from Jack itself, because in the very beginning, Jack is there and he's got the knife at uh, the sword at Clint's neck and everything. And he was creative, and I loved to talk with Eleanor and Jack about the case, <laughs> mm -hmm. as it were, that Kate was uh, helping him out with. Uh, and plus, you know, that whole conversation that we were just talking about with Eleanor and Clint about keeping Kate out of the case itself. And, you know, th there was something she kind of hesitates when she's talking to Clint at one point, but she did salt the wound about widow and how losing somebody 
and you could see it in Clint's face. It, it's like she was like really twisting the knife in him, and, and to some degree regarding Kate and and losing somebody. Uh, I love that Laura when she does call, she's speaking German, which brings up a lot of questions about Clint's wife. Uh, you know, was she a widow? Was she, or was she part of the way Clint was involved with Shield to begin with? Or uh, you know, is the watch hers? You know mm-hmm. that he gets or that he has Kate get because a friend. But that was in a Stark compound or the Stark building that went. No, down. it was in Avengers compound. Before it was in Avengers, it was in the Avengers comic. Oh yes, the one upstate, probably mm-hmm. from Endgame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what. Uh, yeah, that's it, that's important because it wasn't from Stark; it was from the Avengers compound. So it's my concern of like, who is that? Mm-hmm. I really am curious, and I hope we do find out at the very end. I'm sure we will find out who that person is. Yeah, I had in my notes the whole thing about the watch because, you know, we finally get the watch back. We get something about it and that whole, like you mentioned, the fact that the uh, – the it ties to someone's identity, you know, and he, he reveals that that watch would, would give away someone's identity who isn't – who people don't know about already. And I'm racking my brain because from what we can tell, most of the Avengers are – Pretty well known, you know who they are. Mm-hmm. Tony, it's obviously not Tony Stark's because everybody knows who Tony Stark was. Knows that he was Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not Clint's. Clint, no. So it's it. I'm kind of hoping it's a it's a hero that we haven't seen yet, and they're kind of establishing that hero's presence. So it's 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 going to be interesting uh, to see, especially with the whole joke about Ant Man not having been actually at the Battle of New York, but he was in the <laughs> musical, and so now we're getting this possibility of another hero yeah. being introduced who we've never actually seen on screen before. Yeah, same here. Uh, it, I'm wondering if it ties into another Disney Plus uh, Marvel show. That would, yeah, that yeah. would be cool. That would be cool. Um, your number four? Uh, my number four is uh, Clinton Kate's their their the little holiday holiday party she throws. I yep. thought was I thought it was great. I thought that they did the ugly sweater thing. They did the movie <laughs> marathon. Yep. So they did everything except build the gingerbread house uh, houses. So you yep. got to do those things uh, with with Kate. Um, and I love that we we kind of been hinting at this and talking about it. But Clint, we really see him. He kind of starts to embrace that this mentoring role yes of of kate where he, he teaches her about throwing the quarter yep you know and They're then bonding. yep mm-hmm. and then he, he he talks to her about about natasha and i thought that was that scene is just so great and Haley steinfeld and and, and uh, jeremy renner play that scene you can see the anguish on his voice mm-hmm. uh, in his voice and on his face when he's talking about nat you can see her concern for him I just I loved it, and uh, I love also that we finally get she figures out that he's Ronan, that he she figures out that oh yep. you lost your entire family in the blip, and that's right when Ronan appeared was just after the blip, mm-hmm. so that's how you coped with the the loss of your family, and you could just see her realizing you know not it's a compassion for the things he had to do. The things that he did as Ronan. Yeah, exactly. He is owning up to it, actually, which is really cool. Uh, my number four is the same exact thing as yours. So uh, the only thing I'll add on to it is the whole uh, the quarter flip thing. And, and he mentions he couldn't really do it too much with dimes and nickels. So he has to use a quarter. And then she didn't believe him. And then he does it. And she goes, you got to teach me. And then he teaches her. I really enjoyed that. The fact that, you know, the, like, what was it, the second take that she does it? And then it almost hits uh, the pizza dog. Yeah. Lucky, yeah. as it were. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, oh, she didn't knock out the dog at least. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty cool. And I do enjoy that. And they both were wearing um, ugly Christmas sweaters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, because she heard, did she hear? No, she wasn't present. So he's probably talked about it, though. Yes. Yeah. The things that he was going to do with his family. Yeah. She I, wasn't present, but yeah. It might have been when he was talking to his son on the phone when she was deciphering mm-hmm. everything because yeah. he couldn't hear because he didn't have yeah, the hair. Yeah. Yeah. Because he did say some things about the movie marathon. So yeah, it's, 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 I'm sure they've talked about it. So yeah. So I, I can, I can buy into that. Yep. Uh, so my next one, and I hope I don't, I hope, 
I'm not just stealing all your points or that you have at least extra things to, to bring up, but it's Kate in the LARPers. I just love uh, the return of grills. <laughs> yeah. um, I love her whole, the whole thing of her negotiating when she sees them uh, there in the park and they're practicing and rehearsing. And, uh, but you know, it's a little, I, I was a little concerned because we have this police officer who is agreeing to remove evidence from the, uh, you know, from the, the police lockup. And I'm <laughs> yeah, kind of like, exactly right. <laughs> mm, is that, you know, and, and, you know, maybe she can rationalize it by that. It's uh it's an Avenger she's doing it for, but still it seems, and I was confused. I thought they went back to Kate's, the, the aunt's apartment, the safe house they were in, but I think, no, I think uh, I, I was listening to another podcast and I think they were actually at one of the LARPers apartment. So again, Kate must've sent him the information of where she was. Really? Uh, yeah, that's because the decor is different and I, I didn't think about it until, uh, until I saw, until I was listening to huh. the TV podcast and they were talking about it. And I realized that it makes sense that it was, it was not the safe house apartment they were yeah, in. Yeah, But how did Clint know how to go there? Well, I'm sure she could have just texted him the address. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, the, you know, it, the reason why I'm thinking, I was like, well, uh, it's like, I have to look back at it and I'll, I'll try it for next week. But yeah, the, her aunt had, uh, posters that were framed especially with when she was <laughs> using a non erase right. marker and we on didn't, it we didn't see we that didn't and see then there's that. another yeah. there's another poster there was something like i said again i think it was P tv podcast industries that mentioned there was a, a one of the posters that talks about dragons so that's why they they assumed it was one of the, and then plus grills is cooking so i don't think grills would have just come in to the safe house apartment and, and just start cooking stuff. in somebody else's and, house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And have all the stuff to make snickerdoodle uh, cookies. So yeah. it, it makes sense that it was one of their apartments. Yeah. And I also love that. Uh, this is my number three as well, but you know, the fact that she just shows up saying that she's his partner and everything mm -hmm. else and gets everything going. I love how girls turns it around saying, Hey, well, let's, uh, th this is a good way of negotiation. We'll, you could do this. And then she goes, oh, all right, uh, I'll get you the materials for your costumes, but you got to do two others for us. So <laughs> meaning that, hey, wait, we're going to get costumes out of Clint and Kate at the very yeah. end of this uh, season, I think. Because yeah. we only have two episodes, so <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be cool to see what what costumes they come up with and uh, uh, and what they do. And, and think about it, you know, if you're if you're a LARPer and you're able to tell somebody, hey, my costume was designed by an Avenger. My costume, the the parts of my costume came from an Avenger. That'd be pretty cool. And so. I loved how Kate embraces the whole LARPing thing. She goes, oh, mm -hmm. it looks like she was going to get involved with the LARPing. Yeah. Which yeah. is pretty cool. I, yeah, she's I, dressed up like a Viking, and yep. she says, I look good, and all that kind of stuff. So and it's yeah, like, oh, yeah. you made this? Yes. Oh, you can make ours. Okay. And then it worked out. Yeah, I really enjoyed that whole conversation. And you could tell they are all getting along. And like I stated, I really do enjoy the fact that they have the NYPD and the NYFD. And FD and Y. Uh, FDNY. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't correct you earlier, but when you since you said it again, I, I thought I'd make that yeah fdny fdny yep yeah and i live in new york and i should know better <laughs> <laughs> i watched rescue me so that's why i know <laughs> but uh yeah especially since my grandfather was a fireman <laughs> but anyhow yeah i just love that they get them involved in the fact that they have this friendship with all these people and like i stated before i, I i'm glad within this episode it shows a little bit more and they're more involved but I have a funny feeling, even towards the end, you're going to see them more involved. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that the the very last episode, we'll, yeah. we'll see we'll the see. NYPD get involved in some way to help out Clinton and Kate. That would be cool. Uh, my next one is, is pretty short. We've already talked about a, a little bit is the return of the watch. But also in that whole scene where building up to... Kate going to get the watch. Again, we kind of see this mentoring side of Clint where he's telling her, oh, it should take me three minutes to get into the building. And then she's crossing the street on her own. He's like, okay, well, since you're crossing the street, here's what you're going to do. You're going to do this and you're going to rappel down. And she's like, no, no, I've got my own way in. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, the only thing that kind of took me out of it a little bit the second time was I'm like – 
realizing she's walking around the streets of New York with a with bow a, and arrow. Yeah, with a big bow and a bunch of arrows strapped on her back. Is this not like wouldn't this draw attention? And that to, and my, that purple suit that she's got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's it's a little bit, you know, and she's definitely not chill about working with an Avenger because she's just like excitedly telling the guy. Everybody, in the but he, yeah. he yeah, that that's that's part of my my number two as well. But it's funny how it's like when he gets in there, as soon as she starts just like Oh, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to an Avenger. Right. And it's just like, and he starts getting uncomfortable. He's like, I got to leave. I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought that was pretty cute, that scene. And uh, it also falls into the fact, too, you said that she's walking around with the bow and arrow. And, and even in, like, Central Park. Was it Central mm-hmm. Park? I think it was, where the I, LARPers were. Yeah. <laughs> they. She's there with the bow and arrow. She's got a quiver on. She's got, walking around with the bow. Yeah. What? What is with that? <laughs> it's like, it's like you would think a cop would stop her and say, "Hey, uh, that's a weapon. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Because yeah. you know, it's one thing. The like the stuff the Larpers were using was obviously like homemade and was not real. Yeah. Real weapons. You can tell. But she's that's a legit longbow and arrows she's got yeah. on her back. So and Clint yeah. makes a comment too. She goes, "Well, how do you not be seen?" Oh, so he goes, "Oh, mine's retractable." Yeah. Oh, it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> but yeah. It's really good. My number two also involves Kate getting into Echo's apartment. Uh, who leaves the watch just sitting out there with the tag? <laughs> and on top of that, leaving like on a, like a notepad about Clint's family all written out. Who does this this day and age? Usually you would think they would you know, put it in her phone or something and then maybe lock up the watch, but it's all there out plain to see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was that- the only issue I had with the episode. But the fact is you, you had to move along for the story itself, but you know, but I, I really enjoyed it. And then the, the confusion of who's attacking who within the apartment and who's up on the roof with Clint. And then we find out later on and then, you know, uh, the humorous aspect of her coming down through uh, try to zip line with her bow. Yeah. And she really couldn't do it because it stops after a while. <laughs> and then a kick to it actually starts her up again. And then she kicks uh, Florence Pugh, who we know as Yelena. Uh, what, what's her name? Yelena Belova? Yelena Belova or something like that. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah. And then we get the whole on – the rooftop fight, which is my number one, but you move into which your is number my number. One. Yeah, it's my number one as well. Is that whole fight on the on the rooftop I, it, with the choreography of it? We've talked about it before the choreography of the fights in oh, this amazing. series have been just incredible. I loved you know a couple specific moments that I'll just highlight is uh, Kate. I think it was Kate when Maya pulled the gun and she kicks it out of her hand, and then she like flips the she uses her foot and she like flips the gun up in the air and it falls down through the center of the building. Just that kind of a move was just like, I was just like, that is incredible. Um, and then, and the gun uh, doesn't go off. (laughs) You would would think normally guns don't go off and you got to pull the trigger for a gun to go off. Despite what I'm not going to get political. Okay. Be be specific. You're you're a gun (laughs) user. I mean, most, most modern guns, you got to pull the trigger. And that, particular one i think if i if i saw it it was very quick but it looked like a walther like a walther ppk like an old james bond yeah. kind of gun which is still it's a double that's a double action gun that that you're, it's, you you got to pull the trigger but I'm, if I'm a sorry, 38 folks. if a 38 was to fall it most likely would fire I, no, because that's the thing. Modern modern firearms, you've got something's got to strike the yeah, primer the hammer. of the yeah, bullet, right? The bullet, yeah. But if, if if nothing pulls the hammer back, and especially if it's a striker fired gun, which that is probably a striker fired gun, yeah, something has to has to hit the striker to push the striker into the primer, and you know it just doesn't. It just modern weaponry just. They, it doesn't work like that. You do. I carry. Okay, I'll, I'll get into guns a little bit. Just a little bit. Explain. Man, explain guns. I carry. I carry a, a, a Colt 1911. I carry a Colt Defender 1911. I carry it every day. 45 caliber. I carry it with a bullet in the chamber, safety on, and the and the hammer back. I carry that ready to go because if I'm not going to pull it unless I intend to use it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's and that's what it what it's for. That gun is not going to go off unless I 
to put the safety off and squeeze the trigger. There's uh, okay. no, that gun is not going to go off. I have walked around. In fact, I have accidentally took the safety off Ooh. and walked around with the gun, with the safety off hammer cocked and had it not go off. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying is, is modern firearms. Okay. Yes. There, if you, if you want, if you used to watch the old original Magnum PI with uh, Tom Selleck, mm-hmm. the 45 that he carried was a pre 1970s or a pre 1976 Colt 45 that yes, those had some issues to where <laughs> you could drop it and it could conceivably make the hammer go forward if it's been cocked. So, so yes, older firearms, there are some issues with you can drop it and it might go off, huh. but modern firearms today, you got to squeeze the trigger. You, you just, they don't just go off on their own. I think so. it just dissolved everybody's fantasy when they watch a movie and you see a gun fall and it fires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't. It just doesn't work that way. It, there's too many. Yeah, there's just too many things. There's too many, especially with striker fired guns. There's too many things that have to happen mechanically for that gun to fire. Yeah, uh, that it, you can't just drop it and, and make it go off. So, sure. sorry, I went off on. <laughs> no, it's okay. But. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my number one. Uh, the only other thing I had uh, on that number one was I loved as soon as I saw those those things she used to stun Clint, oh. I knew exactly who it was. I knew we finally got Florence Pugh. We finally got uh, <laughs> Elena. We finally got Black Widow's sister. And I can't wait for the conversation to where where Clint's going to find out that this is Natasha's sister and how that is going to be resolved. I don't know if they're going to be able to resolve it in the next two episodes or if it's going to have to be resolved in some future thing. Uh, But Mm. you would think it's going to have to be somehow resolved uh, unless they're just going to make Yelena a straight up bad guy. I don't know because it's yeah. Yeah. I just don't know. Everything's speculation at this point with her, but I was so excited to finally see her. Well, we all knew that it was going to happen because at the end of Black Widow, we do see uh, – what's her name from Seinfeld? <laughs> Show her the picture of Clint, and mm-hmm. that was the mark. Right. And it shows that uh, Val is a part of this whole thing. It makes you wonder what Val's involved with and how she was tapped to put a hit onto Clint at that point. And is Val bad or is she part of things like maybe the Kingpin, the Hand, or maybe Eleanor, or maybe Kate's father, who we don't know? There's so mm-hmm. many questions that are coming up regarding that. But for the most part, within the uh, the scene that you're talking about, like with on the roof, when they're fighting, you know, it's like Kate at certain points, you, you think she was going to go over a few points and that was kind of like rush a rush to go and watch got me on the edge of my seat and everything i really enjoyed that and then of course that uh that typical black widow dive backwards and then she's got the cord hanging on just like natasha did Mm -hmm. you know and i really enjoyed that part of it anything else on your number one there uh pretty much that's it Okay. Um, I've only got a couple of little notes that we we haven't really talked about. Uh, I, I thought Clint using the frozen food and those frozen uh, slushy drinks uh, as as kind of ice packs was, was just hilarious. And then his whole talk with Kazi in, in the car mm. uh, trying to convince, you know, Kazi to, you know, not – not get Maya to go after the Ronin was was really uh, really good. Exactly, especially when he goes, "Oh, y'all, you're looking for the box cutter? It's gone. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're looking for this? <laughs> yeah." And then he tosses the gun after he goes, "Oh, you're gonna give me my gun back?" And he just tosses it with his left hand, which didn't really look like a good throw to me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack's misuse of uh, a- aphorisms uh, uh, and how Kate pointed, points it out to him, too. I thought it was pretty funny. Actually, it had me laughing with the a bunch that he, he was talking about. Um, boomerang arrows. That talk was funny, uh, if you remember that. And Clint yeah. goes, states, uh, yeah, then they come back. <laughs> you have to dodge, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, was a great, that was a great conversation. Uh, Kate's arrow hit to Maya was not a kill shot. And it shows that Kate's not ready to do killing. She's not uh, an assassin. But it did make an impact on Maya the way she looked at Kate afterwards. 
And uh, the only time we got lucky or pizza dog is that one scene, like uh, with the the quarter throwing. <laughs> well, we got to see we got to see he was on the leash in the park when she went to the, see the larvae. Very true. Um, yeah, he yeah. was. He went to bed with her. Uh, he was uh, there. He was right next to her. A couple. There was a couple of shots that I happened to notice today because they were really cool shots where they gave us overhead shots of seeing her laying there and Lucky was kind of at her at her head or at her feet or right there with her. You could tell this dog is definitely bonded to Kate, and I, I'm I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah, same here. And I don't think that's the last we'll see of this dog either. Oh, of course not. No. Of course not. Uh, I, the only quote I've got is I loved the whole between Jack and, and Clint where he says, by the way, thank you for saving the world. <laughs> and Clint says, no problem. You know, I just, <laughs> it was just so out of the blue that, that Jack is just like, thank you for saving the world. <laughs> so Yeah. Uh, I, I just left the fact that, you know, the, the coffee cup that Clint's been drinking out of keeps saying Thanos was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I caught that today. I didn't catch it in my earlier watches, and I was like, I was like, he's got a coffee mug that says Thanos was right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. The only quote that I have is the um, is when Jack goes, "You're the Archer." <laughs> he can't get his name right. Can't even get aphorisms right. It's pretty funny. The the I think the character is there meant to be a joke, but. Uh, with his uh, fencing style and how he was able to take on Kate, it shows that he knows things. So I, I think this character is going to be somebody that we're going to find out towards the end as well, but he's not going to be the evil one. I don't think, because in the very beginning, we get that feels with Armand and how Armand died. Mm -hmm. And this uh, Armand, what was it? Uh, the third? He uh, How he died... And then you, you think right away it's Jack, but I don't think so. I, I think Eleanor had something to do with it, and uh, those are my thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not sure. It's definitely I, – he's definitely become more of a – just doesn't seem as bad of a bad guy, hmm. even though he is the, the head or the CEO, whatever, of Sloan corporations they did figure out that he is the the he's he's some kind of leader in this organization but i think i think you're right i think he's going to end up being you know something else just a foil or a, a, just a you know front yep all right well there was no feedback i uh, didn't see any feedback on instagram nope i either on twitter or instagram or facebook so uh, send it anyway, everybody. If uh, you feel the need, just send it our way. You know how to get there. Uh, comic news. Well, obviously, countdown to Spider-Man No Way Home. And I uh, can't wait for that to come out. I'm not going to go into any of my thoughts on that, but I'm still looking forward to it. Uh, I'm excited. Yep. Podcast recommendations? Uh, the only one I have uh, this week is the Nevers podcast from Culture Inject Productions. Uh, they're almost done with their Firefly rewatch. Uh, this is uh, out of they're, they're somewhere out of the UK, I think. I, I don't know exactly where, but I, I have occasionally been sending them voicemails and they'll play them on there. Uh, they're very big uh, Joss Whedon fans and they haven't tried to cancel them or anything. They are, they they've talked a little bit about the the publicity stuff but really they like to fo focus on the shows and uh, and that so i really love it so again the nevers podcast from culture inject projections awesome well for me it would be tillum steve dave and you could find them on the smodcast network and that's kevin smith's network for podcasts and everything smodco related so those who love clerks and all of kevin smith's work will love it uh, because you have Two of the comic book men, Walt Flanagan and Brian Johnson on there, as well as Brian Quinn from Impractical Jokers. So it's just the typical them hanging around, having a good time, and talking. So I suggest that. Uh, BQ is actually from Staten Island, like myself. <laughs> so... As Mark already mentioned, you can submit your your uh, feed, you can give us your feedback in many many ways. Obviously, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice. If that pet podcast player of choice has the ability to give us reviews, we would love to get a five star review from you. You can check out our website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We have an email address, which is at panels to pixels. 
Uh, I'm sorry, that's the Twitter. Twitter is at panels two pixels with the number two mm-hmm. in the middle. Our email address is panels two pixels one at gmail.com. Panels two pixels one, the TO spelled out in the middle, the number one at gmail.com. Com. And then we are also on Instagram at Panels to Pixels Podcast. And we are on YouTube as Panels to Pixels Podcast as well. You can interact with us in any of those methods. We would love to hear from you and love to get a follow or just get a mention. Exactly. So next week we'll be continuing our uh, coverage of Hawkeye. So we're going to be doing the penultimate episode, the number five. Yeah. episode so uh keep a listen out for that one when it comes out uh if you have any any thoughts on that you do send it the way uh steve had just mentioned how to get to us with feedback we also recommend that you check out all the other podcasts that can be found on the next level radio online podcast network so just go to the website and check all those out uh wilhelm is doing great um and uh pat johnson is actually doing very good with his uh podcast as well so check those out on the next level radio online podcast network so where else can listeners hear us steve well i send voicemails to various podcasts that uh, that i listen to and they they play those i can on occasionally be heard as a guest on other podcasts so uh love i will always tell you when i am uh going to be on another podcast so you can give a listen to those and, well, I can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that can be found on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And there we cover action films, adventure films, and suspense and thriller films. So uh, I've already gave a list of what's coming out, but obviously They Live will be coming out next. It should be up by the end of this weekend when this comes out. And then after that would be The Fifth Element, and then I will be recording with our friend Megan, and we'll be covering Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. So check that out and just go to the uh, go to our Facebook page, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So it's facebook.com slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. And you could just leave comments there if you'd like. If not, you could always just check out the uh, PyrocoreEntertainment.com website and you could find other ways of interacting with us there. What's the email address for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast? That's Adrenaline Cinema Podcast at gmail.com. So. But uh, with that, that was our show, and I really, uh, I had a great time talking about this one, and it brought up a lot of good questions. I really, I'm looking forward to what we get for the next two episodes, and I can't wait to talk about those when they come out. So uh, that's it for us this evening. I just want to thank everyone for listening, and I'm Mark. I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.